Hey church, this is Pastor James, and I am coming to you here at Highlands Church to talk to you about the weekend message. Now, this is something that I do every week, and I thought that I would share this, uh, this little conversation that we have every week with you this week, and to talk to you about it so that you know that it's a resource available to you on the website every single week after the sermon. It's a resource that you can use in your small group if you start one, or it's one that you can use on your own if you're doing a self-guided journey to try to have more in-depth conversation and reflection on the weekend messages. And so these will be available to you every single week after the sermon. And you can find it on our Connect page on the website, and you will be able to scroll down, and there you'll find every single week a link to the Talk It Over messages. And you'll also find one in the email if you're getting this through an email. Now, um, one of the things... uh, that we do through Talk It Over. We talk about the weekend message and we read the scripture. So when you go into this experience, you're going to want a Bible with you. uh, And you're also going to want a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, as you watch a Talk It Over video, one of the things you can do is you can uh, pause it to go and get things. I mean, that's pretty obvious and goes without saying, but you can also pause it as we ask you to read scriptures. I'll ask you, or if I ask you a question, you pause it after the question, write down your answer if you're doing it on your own, or use that moment after the question to talk to your group about those, uh, those ideas or, or thoughts, and then to dive deeper in reflection. And then we'll ask you to read a scripture. So you'll pause it then, and then you'll read the scripture from your Bible or from your smartphone or something else. So this is meant to be a time of personal or corporate, meaning together group led discussion, and to be a tool for you so that the sermons or the weekend messages are not something that you're just, um, you know, I mean, they're fantastic in their own right. I love weekend messages. I love to have those, but it's really great to have those opportunities to return to those ideas and to reflect on them and to really ask yourself, how am I going to take the next steps in my faith journey? Now, if you're getting this again through the email, then you're going to find a link to the weekend messages from the week before. And you can always find those on the website if you want to check that out. And uh, if you're looking at this on a YouTube video or something else, you'll find that the link is listed below to the weekend messages. So you can watch that ahead of time. But by the way, you don't need to watch or listen to the weekend messages in order to get something out of Talk It Over. This is a Bible study time. This is a time of reflection. It should be a blessing for you. I pray it is. So now we're going to jump into the weekend message. It was called Uplifted. And we just started this series. It's a great one. It's all about what our new year is going to look like. And uh, a lot of people make New Year's resolutions, and they're always trying to figure out uh, how to have a better year. And they're looking back at last year and thinking of all the ways that they've messed up or succeeded. Now, this week in our message, we talked about the mind and how the mind is the greatest asset that you will ever have. Well, it's one of your greatest assets, and it is also your greatest roadblock. That there are people who are traveling to the moon, they're, tra- they're, 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 they're building spaceships to travel to outer space and, and visit Mars, they're doing incredible things, and then there's, they're doing that with their mind, but also those same people, ha- their greatest weakness and their greatest, uh, their, their, their greatest um, opportunity for failure is going to be their own mind as well, creativity or, or brokenness or whatever those other things, or self-sabotage essentially. The question I want to ask you is, thinking about that, is, um, is your mind or has your mind last year or the year before, is your mind causing you to sabotage your own efforts? Um, and how I want you to be specific and how you don't have to, if you're in a group, you don't have to get into all the nitty gritty. You can just say yes, if it feels uncomfortable, but if you feel like you want to share, please be specific. And so just pause the, pause the little conversation now on your, on your computer or wherever you're watching it and have that conversation. Again, if you're doing the self-guided, now's the time for you to just little do a bullet point and write a paragraph. Uh, just write a book about how writing is healing and how there's actually something that can happen as you're, as you're writing, that it will, that it will, that that kind of, that kind of processing will help you to think about and reflect on your own story and help you to better integrate God into your life. So here, Answer that question, pause this, and then we'll get into our, the rest of our Talk It Over discussion. Okay, great. Now, the letter that we're looking at today, you're going to want to find it in your Bibles. It's 1 Corinthians. It's in uh, chapter 2, and it is, written, it is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, which is a church that was at the, at the apex of, of all economies of the world and the trade routes and all of the knowledge centers and all those other things. These people loved, as you can even see from their, 
Greco-Roman temples, that they have these incredible, um, these are testaments to the knowledge that they had. These are testaments to the scientific discovery. I mean, this kind of construction was, was amazing at the time, but it wasn't just the construction, it was the ideas and everything. And they, they tended to, while their mind was their strength, it was also their greatest weakness because Paul started to re realize that they were really leaning on their mind a lot. And so I want you to think about as you're reading through scripture. Now, when you read the scripture, if you have a paper version, please use a highlighter. Use a highlighter or a pencil to underline ideas that, that start to jump out at you. Any ideas that you see, make little notes in the margins. Use this time to really reflect on scripture. So read 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Just read those that many scriptures, pause the video. After you've read it and reflected on it, then we're going to pick up more in this conversation. Okay, you're getting the hang of things. Now, the basis, um, the, 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 what the takeaway that I have from that scripture, and that as I'm reflecting on it, and what God is saying is that we are all weak, we are all weak, and healing happens as we focus on Jesus. Look at that, Paul was standing there. He said he, when he was talking to the Corinthian church, he threw the speech away, and he was vulnerable, and he was weak, and he was filled with fear. A lot of people don't think you can be filled with fear, and that he was um, trembling. That's what the scripture says. Isn't that amazing? And uh, Paul says the way that he got through that experience and the way that God changed that experience to change the world is he focused on Jesus. We have, we have some crosses that we have here at the church that for you to pick up, we'll just have them in a little basket outside the front office doors. Just come down and pick them up. And uh, that's just meant to be a little tool for you to, to reflect on Jesus, to try to bring in that practice of focusing on Jesus in your life. Now, now, this is the question I have for you for reflection. How have your weaknesses kept you from accepting challenges? Think about that. Paul was like, hey, you know what? I'm not good, you know, I'm not good at speaking from my heart. Paul was a, one of the wisest people that, you know, was ever known. He was actually the best student of Gamaliel, which was one of the most sophisticated, best professors at the time, like Harvard or something. Yet he threw away all of the things that he'd all built up in his life. And he went to this place of weakness in his life, which was speaking from the heart, threw away the speech. Wow. Okay. So answer this question. Pause the video, reflect on it, and we'll get back into scripture. Okay. Now I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. Here's the takeaway. God has unlocked all the secrets of God for you in Jesus Christ. Now, by the way, at the time of, first, uh, of this writing to the church in Corinth, there was, a, there was a bad theology, universally accepted bad theology that was thrown out um, over and over again. The church has always had to do it. It is basically a theology called Gnosticism, which is a, which is a terrible, terrible thing that... Um, that people start to claim that they have a secret knowledge of God that is not available in scripture and it's not available to anybody else, that only they have this knowledge. It's the first time they've ever had it in, in all of human history. That's what was going on in the church of Corinth. They had Gnosticism going on. People were claiming that they knew something about God. Paul is speaking into that. By the way, the, the good theology that was spoken in, in opposition to the bad theology is that, um, that scripture is sufficient, that all that we need in the revelation of Jesus Christ is everything. We don't need any more revelation than we've already had. We have enough through scripture. And so Paul is talking about that, uh, that God has already unlocked all the secrets of God that you'd ever need in your entire life in Jesus. Now here is, here is a, here's a question for you. How do you think focusing on Jesus would change your fearful moments? How do you think that focusing on Jesus would change your fearful moments. Um, think about how that would how that would be a transformative thing for you in your life, and how that would apply. Try to figure out how that would have something to do with with um, the the world that would claim to have secret wisdoms or claim. In a way, isn't it the kind of? I, I just want you to go down this path. Isn't it kind of the the arrogance of the world that claims to have it all together that kind of makes us afraid of speaking to the world? from a place of vulnerability. So think, I want you to think about those two concepts and just, just flesh it out, see where it goes and see where the spirit leads you. Okay, now I want you to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. Now this is a big part of scripture. Paul is basically saying that your, your spirit is connected 
to God's spirit in Jesus. Think about that. The depths of your soul connected to the depths of God's soul, that the spirit of God, even though no one knows your soul, no one could ever know the depths of your soul, but the spirit searches, Paul says, go into scripture, find that word searches. The spirit searches and knows the depths, not just knows the depths, but we are connected to God. And so Paul is saying, man, what do you, what else do you need? What else do you need? You, you don't need like all these 50 steps and all these other things. He says, you have enough in that relationship. And, and so here's my question to you, because I want you to think about the times that you've experienced this in your life. When have you felt most deeply connected to God? When? And I want you to be, yeah, I want you to be really vulnerable about it. Um, for me, when I was really deeply connected to God, um, I, there's a number of times, sunsets, big time. When I see whales in the ocean, big time. Uh, when I was at my place of deepest brokenness, I'd gotten very sick in my, in my 20s. And I was just at the bottom of, bottom of things. I connected, I really felt like I'd connected to God in a powerful way. I want you to be specific. Journal out that, share it, listen to other stories, and we'll get back into scripture. Now we want you to read 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. Okay, what I want you to have as a takeaway that I would like to share with you is this. With the mind of Christ, notice that Paul focuses on the mind of Christ after talking about all of the worldly wisdom. With the mind of Christ, you will experience untold strength. Now, does this mean that you will not have weaknesses? No. Does this mean that you're going to go through life and you're going to always have strength and that you'll never, you'll never have feelings? No. And it's interesting. A lot of times people think, people think that, that if they have weakness, it's a sign that God's not doing things in and through them. That if they have uh, fear, that, that they are, they're in a bad place. In fact, God might be calling you into a place of weakness and, and, and fear and trembling and shaking. That can be very much an evidence that you are being faithful to God's call in your life. And that if you have those experiences, they are not, uh, they are not prohibiting God from doing great things. So I want you to think about that and reflect on it. And I pray that every time that you do this, uh, talk it over, um, that you would be thinking about, um, that you would be praying when you do it, uh, ending your conversation in prayer, uh, that you would be, um, that you would ask others for things that they could pray for. So if you're doing this alone, maybe you could text somebody, just text one other person and say, is there anything I can pray for you for today? And if you're doing it in a group context, ask someone um, what you can pray for them, or even if, even if it's a positive thing, something wonderful to say thank you to God for. And uh, this is Talk It Over. So I'm glad that I was able to share this experience with you. For those of you that just ran, went through the video, you, you got the idea and didn't do the experiment. You know it's a resource that's available to, to you. You don't have to do it. Um, you know, it's, you don't have to do it every week. Anytime that you feel like you want to do it, you can do it and you can try it out and maybe give yourself a little bit of a, a restart or a kick, uh, you know, a, a, a charge up in your life. And um, I just want to say thank you for joining me for this Talk It Over. And I look forward to some of you, uh, anybody that wants to do it, check out the Talk It Over videos on the website. They will always be there. We will not email them to you every week because we don't want to just inundate you with the email. So they will be on the website for you to check out and use on a weekly basis. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing how some of you guys are stepping out. Let, let us know. Email us if you're appreciating Talk It Over so that we can kind of, uh, we can pray for you and let us know how we can support you or help you out and, and lift you up in the journey ahead. All right, take, it, take, take care. I look forward to seeing you again someday for Talk It Over. Bye.